Welcome once again to the Club Runner video tutorial series. In this episode, we'll take a walk through the volunteer module. We'll look at differences between the basic and enhanced versions of the module and take a tour of all the basic functions. We'll create a new volunteer signup list and look at managing volunteer tasks. We'll also talk about contacting volunteers and generating volunteer reports. Service groups and charity organizations alike rely on the work of dedicated volunteers to complete their goals. Whether you rely on community volunteers to support your work or members to make club events happen, the efforts of your volunteers need to be focused and organized. Club Runner's volunteer module can help you achieve this maximization of volunteer efforts. You're already connected with the basic version of the volunteer module. The basic module allows you to create online sign-up sheets and to organize shifts and tasks into multiple groups. You can invite members to sign up at your site or through email invitations. In addition, members can track their commitments using the My Commitments section of Clubrunner. The basic module can meet the needs of most clubs. If you have a large or active club, you may need the Enhanced Volunteer module. The limits of the basic version are as follows. You can create up to 10 groups, each of which can contain up to 10 tasks. Each of these tasks can have up to 10 volunteers assigned. There is also a limit of 250 non-member volunteers that can be tracked in total for all sign-up lists. The enhanced version of the volunteer module encompasses all the functions of the basic version with a number of extra features. You can create public signups that allow non-members to volunteer. You can also create multiple signups for the same event or even create signups that are not associated with an event. This allows you to manage volunteers for ongoing tasks and more. With the enhanced version, you may also create custom email templates. The enhanced version also allows you to create a greater number of signup lists, groups, and tasks. You can create up to 25 groups, each of which can have up to 25 tasks, each of which may have up to 25 volunteers assigned. You are also able to manage as many as 2,500 non-member volunteers for all signup lists. First, we'll look at the creation of a volunteer signup list, the most important function offered through the volunteers module. As with all Clubrunner features, the volunteer module is accessed by logging into your Clubrunner site and then accessing the membership area. In order to create a signup list, you'll need an access level of at least 50. To access the Volunteers module, click on the Events tab and then on the Volunteers link. You are now on the Volunteers page. To look at your currently existing signup lists, click on View Signup Lists on the left side of the screen. Keep in mind that you can always create a signup list by copying an existing one or by creating one from scratch. In our case, we're going to create a new list from scratch. The first thing you'll need to do is give the new signup list a name. This is a required field. The name should be short and clearly indicate the purpose of the list. In this case, let's say we need to create a signup list for volunteers to assist at a community food drive. Set the start and end date and time for a signup list. Click on the calendar icon to open a mini calendar to choose a day to start and then another to end. If relevant, select the start and end times as well. Remember, these times and dates are not tied to the time and date of the event, but only reflect the times when the sign-up list is active. A sign-up list can become active weeks or months before an event, and typically they close before an event. However, you can set these values as you wish. If you choose not to set any start and end dates, the list will remain active indefinitely. The next step is to set the access level for the volunteer sign-up list. You have two options. If you want to make your list public, select Yes. This will mean anyone can see the list and sign up if it is posted on your website. If you select No, only members and other site users will be able to view it and sign up. Note that public access is only available within the enhanced version. In the next step, you are asked whether or not you wish to link the sign-up list with an event. If you are using the basic version of the module, you must associate the sign-up list with an event. If you have the enhanced version, you may create a sign-up list that stands alone. This feature is useful if your club has ongoing tasks that require volunteers. For example, your club might help maintain a garden at your meeting venue. Rather than tie this garden maintenance to a specific event you've created, you can simply assign volunteers to tasks they complete periodically when the garden is in bloom. Assuming that you're using the basic version of the module or that you wish to assign an event with the sign-up list, select the event from the drop-down menu. If you are using the basic version of the module, you must have at least one active event to create a sign-up list. If you have not created an event, or have created a draft event, you won't be able to proceed past this step. Now, select a sign-up list chair. 
This defaults to the member creating the list, but you may select any club member regardless of their access level. The sign-up list chair will be able to edit the sign-up list and manage the volunteer assignments. You have the option now to automatically email all confirmations to the sign-up chair. Select Yes if you wish to do this, or select No if you don't wish to send emails to the chair. This brings us to the Task Default section, where you can organize the jobs or tasks undertaken by the volunteers. This section essentially allows you to quickly add a number of tasks, but you don't have to do so at this step. Once the sign-up list is created, you'll have the opportunity to build your list further in the next screen. You can organize tasks into group and set the number of tasks per group and the number of volunteers required for each task. Once you've entered this information, you can always return to Edit and Expand it. First, set a default task name. This is automatically set to Shift, but you may set any name you choose. Now, select the number of task groups you wish to create for this task. Each group will be undertaking a different set of specific jobs within that grouping. You may then assign the number of tasks under each group. For example, if you had a sign-up list for a cleanup after meeting, you might create the tasks Wash Dishes and Sweeping Up. That would require you to set this to two tasks. Now, set the number of people needed to complete each task. Now we must set the start time and date for the volunteer tasks, if relevant. At the question, do the tasks have a start date or time, you must select yes or no. If you select no, then no start date or time needs to be assigned and you may continue on to saving the sign-up list. If you select yes, a number of new options appear. The start date field defines the day the given task becomes effective. This field is mandatory. You can then set a given time on that day, if relevant, and also set an end time. You are now asked whether you'd like to increment the tasks and set duration for those increments, if so. This allows you to set a duration for a given task or shift. For example, if your first task was set to start at 2 p.m. and you choose to increment the task in two hour durations, your second task in the group would start at 4 p.m. When you are ready, click on the Create Sign-up List button. We are now on the Manage Tasks page for your new sign-up list. Here you can view a list of different task groups and the shifts and tasks they include. You can also edit or alter these items as needed. Remember, you can return to this page at any time to edit the information it contains. Using the buttons along the top of the task list, you can create a new task group. You can also create new individual tasks or multiple tasks to be assigned to a given group. When you create a new group or new task, you follow the basic steps we outlined earlier in this video. You may also edit an existing item simply by clicking on the Edit link here under the Actions column. We'll start by editing the tasks in our groups. For example, let's say the tasks in Group 1 will cover food collection for our food drive, while the tasks in Group 2 will cover food distribution. On the Edit screen, you can select a new group for this task if you wish to reassign it. You can also change the task name, or set and alter the date and start and end times. You may also change the number of volunteers required for the task. In this case, we'll just rename the task and confirm the other details. When you've finished your edits, click Save. Or click Cancel to discard the changes you've made. I'm going to go ahead and edit the other task in this group and then edit the tasks in Group 2 as well, and you'll see the changes reflected on the next screen. Now let's look at editing the groups. When you edit a group, all you change is the name of the group. For our example, I'll rename Group 1 Food Collection. When you're done naming the group, click Save. I'm also going to go ahead and change the name of Group 2 to Food Distribution. You'll see that change reflected again on the next screen. Now, let's just say you've realized you need a new group of volunteers for this project. In our example, we need another group of people to sort the food as it's being collected. To add a group, simply click on the Add Group button. First, you'll have to name the group. We'll call it Food Sorting in our example. When you're done, click Save. As you can see, we now have a new group without any associated tasks. Let's add a new task to this group. You can do this by clicking on the orange button here, in which case you'll be asked to assign your new task to a group. Or you can directly add a task to this new group by adding the Add Task link. We'll add two tasks to the Food Sorting group, making use of the Add Multiple Tasks tool. As before, we first enter the task name and assign the task to a group. 
Next, we're asked to define the number of tasks. In this case, we'll add two. Now, we set the volunteer requirement for these tasks in the number of people per task field. You now have the option to set a start time or increment the tasks. In this instance, we'll increment each task by two hours, starting at 2 p.m. Now hit the Preview button to review the details you've entered. If they are accurate, click on Save to continue. You're brought back to the Manage Task screen, where you can see the information that you've just entered. You also have the ability to reorganize the order in which the groups are listed, simply by clicking on the group and dragging and dropping it to the desired new location. You can also resort tasks within groups using the same method. And you can even move a task to a new group. Note the start time and date information remains unchanged when you reassign a task to a new group in this way. On this page, you also have the option to manage signups. This allows you to add or remove volunteers from a given task. Let's look at that now. On the signup page, you'll see a list of your task groups and the shifts they contain. You'll also see a list of currently signed up volunteers, if any, for each of the tasks. This is the same screen that members would see when they go to sign up for a task. If you click on the sign up button to the right of a specific shift, you can assign a volunteer to a given position. A pop-up window appears asking you to select whether the new volunteer is a member of your club or a non-member volunteer or whether you wish to sign up yourself. If you select a member of the club, you may select the member from the drop-down list that appears. If you select a non-member volunteer, you are asked to enter their contact details in the field provided. This allows members to sign up friends and family on their behalf. If you wish to assign yourself to the volunteer position, you can confirm your contact details in the fields that appear. When you're finished, you can click Save to add the volunteer to the task. You also have the option to save and book another. This second option will save the volunteer sign-up and let you enter another. You can continue doing this until all the volunteer positions for a given shift are filled. You may also unbook a volunteer from a given position. Simply click on the red X to the right of their name. If you wish to unbook a number of volunteers at once, you may click on the check boxes to the left of the name of each person you wish to unbook, and then click on the Unbook Selected link. Another key function of the Volunteers module is that it allows you to send email invitations to prospective volunteers, as well as emails to the volunteers themselves. To access these functions, click on the links under the Emails heading on the left side of the page. Let's start by clicking on Invite People to Sign Up. In Step 1, you are asked to select the recipients of the message by clicking on these categories. You can expand a given category by clicking on the plus symbol to the left of each one. Then you can further expand the list in order to contact individual members by clicking on the Expand List link here. You can then select each person you wish to email by clicking on the checkbox to the left of their name. If that checkbox is grayed out, that person either doesn't have a valid email account associated with their profile, or their privacy settings disallow emails of this kind. Remember, you can email non-members if the sign-up list has been marked as public. Now we may enter our email message. You may edit this as you wish by directly entering text here, or by making use of the Mail Merge fields located above the Content Editing area. If you are subscribed to the Enhanced version, you also have the option to make use of custom templates that you may have created by choosing them from this drop-down menu. Select the Custom option, then choose the template you desire from the next drop-down menu that appears. Then click on the blue Insert button. When your email is ready, scroll down and click Send. For more information on the steps required to compose and send a message, refer to our video on this subject. An important note to keep in mind is that the members who receive this email invitation can simply click on the sign-up link and be directed immediately to the sign-up list without having to log into the site. This is made possible by a specially coded link for each email that automatically logs them in for this purpose. 
A member can then sign themselves up for any number of tasks, as well as sign up a non-member on their behalf. Next, let's take a look at emailing volunteers within a particular sign-up list. This is a useful tool for communicating important information regarding your event, such as time and date changes, reminder notices, and a thank you message after the event is finished. When you click on Send Email to Volunteers, you are once again taken to an email editing page. However, in this case, the recipient lists are different. A list has been created for each of your tasks. You can only email those volunteers who have signed up for a task within the sign-up list. As with other emails, you can expand these lists by selecting the plus icon. And you may further expand them by clicking on Expand List if you wish to select individual members of a given list. You can then select each person you wish to email by clicking on the checkbox to the left of their name. Next, you may enter a message to the volunteers. As before, a volunteer reminder template has been automatically placed in the message field for you. This gives the recipients a link to review their volunteer commitments. You may edit this message or enter your own using the editing tools and mail merge fields as mentioned earlier in this video. Note again that if you have the enhanced version of this module, you have the ability to create templates which you then are able to select via this drop-down menu here. In this case, we'll choose a volunteer thank you template that I created previously. Now click on the blue insert button. You can see the volunteer thank you email has replaced the previous template text. When you're finished with your email, scroll down to click send. For more detailed instructions on sending an email, please refer to the relevant video in this series. One final important function of the Volunteers module is the ability to generate volunteer reports. These reports help get you an overview of the status of volunteer signups and generate a list of volunteers. You may access these reports via the links under the reports heading on the left side of the screen. The summary report provides you with an overview of all volunteer groups and shifts associated with your signup list. You can see when each shift starts and ends and which volunteers are assigned each position. You can also see the contact details for each volunteer. You may print out this list by clicking on the blue Print button at the top right side of the screen. Now let's look at the Volunteer Report. The Volunteer Report provides a unified list of all the volunteers who have signed up for this list along with their contact information. As with the Summary Report, you may print this report by clicking on the blue Print Report button on the top right. That concludes our walkthrough of the Volunteers module. For more information about the specific functions of the module, refer to the articles in our knowledge base at clubrunnersupport.com. Thanks for joining me again today, and I hope to see you again soon. The factory worker, the store employee, the office worker, the executive, the man on the street. From all of us came the demand for common sense in fundraising. And then we did it. Detroit stopped the waste, put into effect the plan demanded. The plan to give once for all.